What's going on, Badger fans? Welcome to another episode of Lockdown Badgers. We're going to talk about where we were wrong, where we were right, and make a couple more predictions going forward. Give us another opportunity to be wrong and right on today's Lockdown Badgers. Let's go. You are Locked On Badgers, your daily podcast on the Wisconsin Badgers, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's going on, Badger fans? Welcome to Lockdown Badgers, your team every day. I'm your host, Ryan Herrings. There is Justin over at the Bucky Report, also occasionally stopping by on, on Lockdown. Um, we wanted to actually, today's episode, before I get started, brought to you by Game Time. Create an account, use code Lockdown College for $20 off your first purchase. We thought this would be a good opportunity by week, talk about where we were wrong, where we were right, um, and make a couple more predictions. So we're going to start with where we were wrong. Justin, like, and obviously the season isn't over yet, but th- we can make some conclusions where we were wrong and right. Mm-hmm. What's something four games in you're pretty confident you were wrong about? Uh, well, Green, right off the top. Um, I I assumed that he would be our best receiver, at least from an explosive standpoint. And I think the biggest takeaway I, we've had is the offense really hasn't been explosive in general in the passing game yet. It hasn't been bad, but it, it hasn't been really explosive at all. But he has been virtually non-existent so far yeah it's not clicking at all Mm -hmm. Uh, and i'm right there with you on green i have green written down as well i i think i said he's either going to be the one or the two with chim but like Mm -hmm. he's not the one or the two Mm -hmm. like he's not lived up that expectation at all um do you feel like one of the things i kind of i did a show yesterday talking about bi-week questions i feel like this could be a big opportunity for green mordecai that passing game right to get unlocked like if we come out of the bye week and uh, Green still looks like he's out of sync, like it's not in phase. I don't know if you're going to – that might be the last opportunity for the year to really work that in. I, I would agree with that. And the, a big part of it is, is if C.J. Williams continues to play well, he's why would you put him out on the field? You, there's no reason you're going to put him out there unless we're ahead and, or one of the guys needs a break because if someone's very effective, there's no reason not to, put, to keep putting them out there. Yep. Uh, let me give you one of my – I, I infamously before the season said, you know, I think this guy's going to be the defensive MVP, Alexander Smith. That is a uh, he said a rough lock- go of it. Yeah, that's a locked on liars take right there, yeah. which uh, famously comes from a comment somebody made about my show. Uh, they said that's a locked <laughs> on liars take. <laughs> You're every it was the everyday comment. I yeah, thought this was an everyday like, show. They wanted like Saturdays and yeah. Sundays. Three sixty five, twenty four seven. They said locked on liars. So I, I think it's funny. I think it's a hilarious comment. It is, so I'm just actually. taking it and coining it for all my bad takes. Alexander Smith, MVP of the defense. Uh, he's been low key. He, he has been really bad. Holman's been better. I think Matry's been better. He's been the third best corner. And you could argue in some games, Forkren has looked better than, mm-hmm. than Alexander Smith. I think he was better against Purdue. But again, it's been a low bar for him. Yeah, for me, one of them would be the inside linebackers having being super effective in carrying the defense, and they flat out just they've either been middling or poor for mm-hmm. most of the season. Like they've they've it it's the position that it looks the most like it's struggling with the change. Like they fe- they look like they're thinking too much out on the field and not reacting enough, or re- or if they're or if they are reacting, reacting incorrectly. Rank those three for me. Just based on how you think they played this year, those three kind of co-starters. I would say Cheney's number one, even though I haven't liked some of his – he's 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 made some poor guesses or poor choices, but he's been the most reactive, and I think he's been the most disruptive out of the three. Um, I would probably have Moma number two and Turner number three. And I just think Turner – I've seen some more issues with him making bad decisions. Him, Mama and him just they neither one of them seems overly reactive right now. They they look like they're thinking too much. They're trying to, to pick out where they need to go almost in real time. And it's like, this is not how it's supposed to be. Like you're not supposed to even be thinking. You're supposed to just the second this happens, you see a certain thing and you react. And that's not happening at all right now. No, we put some clips up in the Discord. Uh, I think I sent it to you guys as well with, with I think yeah. it was Turner coming off the first couple weeks where he's just his feet are in mud. It's it's mm-hmm. like he's not seeing the keys, and because mm-hmm. that he's not able to react appropriately, it's not that he's not an athlete. Like Turner's an athletic inside mm-hmm. linebacker. All three of them are. Like yeah. they're all good athletes, but they're not. They're thinking. Overthinking is causing them to not use their physical gifts. Yep. 
I agree. And I would I would rank him the same way, by the way. I'd go Cheney, Muma, Turner. Muma has some moments, right, where he just runs through pass protectors. He just mm -hmm. he gets exposed a little bit in space. In I think coverage, Cheney, yeah. Cheney is a little over-aggressive is the read I have on him. He's overrunning things occasionally. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I would go that rank as well. Let me give you another Locked on Liars take. I thought special teams would be a struggle. Like, I really talked about it. I said, new kicker, new punter. This is going to cost us a game. Um, the kicker looks like the, the star of the team, Bacos. Um, and Bertram's been super solid. I think he has been the star of the team so yes. far. Like, he has been – you can't – I mean, he's perfect. And and he's he's hitting some bombs. Like, yeah. how uncomfortable would we have been last year with a 48-yard field goal? We, we, we would have been very uncomfortable. Like, Vacos is hitting them like it's, it's, it's nothing. Like, mm -hmm. I, I would feel confident if you went out for a 53-yarder, I'd be like, I, I feel good about it. Like, I, he's got the leg for it. He seems to be accurate enough. I would say I think he's going to make that 70% of the time. Mm -hmm. And low-key DK as a punt returner? He's been very uh, good. Very good. Like, yeah. he's, good, he's good instincts. Seems to take the fair catch when he should. And when he when the yardage is there, he takes it. Mm -hmm. He's right in that tier below. Like he's not in the Erickson uh, Aberderis Aberderis yeah. tier. Those guys were just more dangerous. But he's definitely above the the tier that just yeah. catches the ball. The, yeah. I don't want to say Jack yeah. Dunn, but Aberderis was could have been like an All Big Ten return guy if they mm -hmm. if he wouldn't have been such a good receiver. Like he was a thing to watch. Mm -hmm. he, he had some Nick Davis in him. Yeah, he. But Chim is like super solid. He's a B. He's a yeah. B plus for Turner. Mm -hmm. Like he's not an elite guy, but he is super solid. So I was mm -hmm. way off in special teams. Yeah, uh, we were talking before the show. They look like it might be the strength of the team is the special teams. I know. think it is. And I think it makes a big difference. When when teams can't quite as easily flip the field on you, it makes a big difference. What a locked on liars take. Um what's what's another one that you you were up to this point you think you you were wrong on? I thought the passing game would click a little bit more than it has overall. Uh, just not not just green, but in general, it feels like we're more tentative than I expected. I expected that it, us to be more explosive, and may, I didn't expect us to be lights out, but I expected it to be a little more boom bust. Like I figured there'd be more big plays, and maybe a few times here and there where we're just not quite clicking right. Right now, we seem to be fairly consistent in what we're doing, but it's just not hitting for the yardage that you'd expect on a lot of stuff. Yeah. It, it just felt disjointed a little bit. Mm. That that one doesn't surprise me quite as much. I think I expected a little bit more growing pains there. Uh, but I, I did expect more consistency. I, I, I really did. We, I mean, we did the over-unders on the Mordecai numbers. We were all higher at this point in the season than he is. So we yeah. all thought this would be a little cleaner. Um, let me give you one more that I had. And I promise you, ladies and gentlemen, we have some good takes too. That's coming up next segment. We didn't get everything wrong. Uh, <laughs> but we like to be accountable. And we like to keep the receipts. I thought the safety group, we talked about the depth of it. Obviously, I think we were all right on Wooler. We, we thought yeah. Wooler would be one of the stars. The defense, check mark. I thought the combination of Latou, uh, Blaylock, I thought that grouping with Austin Brown maybe behind them, even getting some reps. We didn't really talk about Zach that much, but I just thought that group would be much mm -hmm. better overall, and it's really just been a one-man show for the most yeah. part until Zach been recently. Yeah, I would agree with that. I mean, I – to be honest, I expect Austin Brown to play a little bit more than he has. I thought that he would be up, up out there before Zachman is. But, you know, it's not a super shock. I mean, he's, what, a redshirt freshman now? Mm. So, it's. I mean, it, it's not shocking when a player of that age is not necessarily out there pulling massive reps. But the fact that he's in the two deep is, is a plus either way. But I, I definitely expected more. I thought that they would be the strength. I thought that they would do a heck of a job in coverage. And we've kind of been – very hit or miss there. And I, we definitely thought Latu was going to be better than what he is. He's been rough. And I think we expected like some missed tackles because that was last year. Yeah. But with that, we also expected like some big some, plays. Yeah. Because that's the, that's like he's in that JVLI mold where he's going to miss some, but he's going to force some fumbles because he's so violent, so physical. It's just been all bad. There's like, what's the mm -hmm. biggest game changing play Latu has made? Yeah, I don't know if he's had one yet. Does That's he have a Does he have a tackle for a loss at this point in the season? He's probably got he one. One, yeah. yeah. If you look it up, but I can't think of a play where he made and you're watching the game. You're like, oh, there you go. Let's who really blew that. Yeah, up. He needed He needed that one. <laughs> that hasn't yeah. happened. No, I agree. All right, coming up, we are going to talk about some of what we got right. The good takes uh, from Justin and Ryan coming up on Lockdown Badgers. But first, a quick break for friends of the show over at DoorDash. I've talked a lot about DoorDash. I've talked a lot about my inability. 
like to really cook anything. Like if I lived in the caveman days where you actually had to like make food, my clan would not have survived the wars. Mm. I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have gotten to the wars because it would have died of starvation. DoorDash mm. is there for me. Uh, if you're missing syrup for your pancakes, if you just ran out of coffee cream or DoorDash grocery delivery, get what you want right when you need it from grocery stores that you can pick. Easy substitutions right in the app. Best in class customer support. DoorDash delivers groceries exactly how you want it. Justin, I don't know about you. I think you're more culinarily skilled than I am, but DoorDash is there for me. The, the After the burger thing, I know I am. But... <laughs> It was a one-time thing. Oh, sugar and burgers. Ryan, that has never happened to me. Not even never. once. You've never put sugar in burgers? No, no, I have not. God, I could just be a one-off on that one. Yeah. Uh, with DoorDash, get You're one of a kind, my friend. Yeah, for better and worse. Uh, get 50% off your first DoorDash order, up to $20 value when you use code Lockdown College at checkout. Limited time offer terms to apply. That's 50% off. $20, no minimum subtotal, and zero delivery fees with your first order. When you download the DoorDash app in the App Store, enter code Locked On College. Don't forget that's code Locked On College, 50% off your order with DoorDash. All right, let's keep this going. Let, let's get on. I wanted to start with the bad. Get that out of the way. Mm-hmm. Let's cleanse the palate, Justin. Give me something that you were dead on about. I think we would agree that we were right on Will Pauling. I think that he looks like a dude. Honestly, I think we need to get him the ball more. Because yeah. I think he's a he's a problem waiting to happen in the passing game when he can get easy separation. And I wish we would find ways to get him the ball more in space because he looks like a guy that can cause a lot of ha- a lot of problems for a defense. He's mm-hmm. he's, go back to recent Badger receivers. Where does he rate on like your explosive meter? I mean, forget all the other skills, just like the explosive meter. Oh man. Uh, I mean, is he Brandon more- Williams, maybe? Brandon Williams cool. is in that category. Yeah. Um, I mean, Crochet, I mean, he's, not, he's a step behind like a Lee Evans type guy yeah. and stuff like that because they have more size than him. But he's he's probably not super far off in terms of explosiveness to those guys. So, yeah, yeah, he's got major upside, and we we need to find more ways to get him the ball because I think he can be somebody we can lean on in a game that other teams just really struggle. And with a guy like that, you can move him around and make it hard for a defense to key on him. Let me ask you this with, with Paul, because this is something I was thinking about more just with Chez going down and maybe, maybe finding some unique ways to get pulling the ball, like even on end of rounds or out of the backfield, like arrow routes, wheel routes. Does it surprise you? We haven't seen more of that getting him the ball, maybe in, in the boundary um, in unique ways. <laughs> I think we're going to see some more interesting things coming out of this bye week. Like they're going to implement some things that I think are going to be, somebody made it sound like Josh Downs got some of that type of stuff at North Mm -hmm. Carolina. Now I don't know how Pauling stacks up physically to Downs. I know Downs wasn't a huge guy, but he might have been a little thicker than what Pauling is. And, but they're going to have to do something like that because either we know they're not going to hand 10 more carries to Braylon. So it's probably going to be five, seven more passes that are going to come out of this where you're going to say, Hey, we 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 need to get this better, anyways, because I I think we'd all agree that we're not super happy with what we've seen from the passing game so far. There's room for growth there for sure, and hopefully they'll get the opportunity to do that. Yeah, agreed. There. Um, let me just get my easy victory lap out of the way. Washington State, Cam Ward. I'm just gonna get it out of the way. I was so right on that. I was. Not only did I pick. I mean, again, like this is. We just did the whole everything we were wrong about. I'm going to take a moment here. I called that. Not only did I call Washington State, but I knew Cam Ward was a dude. Like, I really had a good feeling on it. Mm-hmm. And I had people say, stop being clickbait. Like, the people thought I was doing that for clicks. And Cam Ward has 13 touchdowns this year and zero interceptions, Justin. He's been one of the five or ten best quarterbacks in the country. Like, mm-hmm. he's incredible this season. So, yeah, I crushed that one. <laughs> like, let's just be honest. Well, well my Purdue take was on. <laughs> I'll take that one. I definitely did not. I did not think it was going to be a loss, and I felt strongly about that 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 would not be the case. A lot of it due to the fact that I knew they had heavy turnover in terms of their skill and quarterback position, and they had a lot of the same issues that they were running into us with less experienced players. Yeah, um, I I'll do Muma Muma. Like I think I'm kind of right. Like I think that things I was worried about with Muma are are accurate in terms of. Mm-hmm. I think people some some people took my Muma take a little too far. Like I don't yeah. think Muma's a bad player at all. I think he's a really solid inside linebacker. He's, he, he's better than what we've seen, and yeah. I think I think the issue is is that the defense in general, some of these guys are really struggling with 
just clicking with some of this. And it's going to get better as the season goes on just because – they're going to get more experience running the plays. Like it will become more second nature to do things, but they, they, there's no doubt about it that we do not have the aggressiveness and quickness that we've expected early on in the season here. And that has to do with the scheme change. Yeah. Like we're doing some different things than what the, the what's required for these guys in the run game is different than what it was in the previous scheme. And that's a big issue. It seems for these guys in, in understanding where they need to go. Well, and I think with Muma too, in pre, and not just Muma, like Muma, Cheney, the inside linebackers in general. Yes. With well, yeah, all year, of them are are not having a great year right now. Yeah, like I don't want to single Muma out on that one. They've had – when was the last time we haven't had like a kind of a disruptive defensive line, at least at least a defensive line that, that controls blockers? We, you've had Benton for four years, mm-hmm. right? And before him, you had Henningsen, you had Louder. Like you had NFL guys on that defensive line, even if they're not elite, elite NFL mm-hmm. guys for a long time. And there's no NFL guy on this defensive line right now. Maybe Thompson yeah. potentially is that guy. Maybe. He's he's the closest to that. It will be interesting to see how he continues to develop. He's going to have to keep putting numbers up. Because mm-hmm. the scheme the scheme is a little different, too. Like, he's being unleashed a little bit more than we've typically seen from guys. So, if he gets the six sacks, which I think is definitely possible. We're only a third of the way through the season. He's got three already. There's a chance for him to really put up, you know, a, a good season from a defensive line spot. I don't know. Like when you watch him, that he looks like a guy that's super explosive, though. Like it seems like more like he's making plays, but it's not like he's this guy who just looks like he's just blowing up the offensive lineman and going through and making plays. He's much more in the louder milk mold, yeah. right? He's not the frame, but he's that type of guy. him. Him with an extra step, yeah. Yep. He's he's not in the freaky athletic Erasmus mm-hmm. James mold, Alec James even. Mm-hmm. Um, I want to throw this up there because this comment was actually saved from my last show. This is from regular duck. We talked about this. I think we'll see Pauling in the backfield more often, similar to how Longo used Josh Downs last year. So that's something we talked about. Um, any other thing that you you're like, yeah, I nailed that. Any other piece that you want to give yourself a pat on the back for? Oh, oh man. Um, I've got one more. If, if you want me to go, what do you think? Well, I can go back to ones I was wrong on. I, I guess I have to take my, my beating for the DK one. That's even my though, point. even though, even though you understand what I my mindset on it was, I need to see it from him. Yep, it's he has shown out better than any receiver that we have right now. In terms and that was of my other one. Yeah, that was my other one where I feel like I was pretty yeah. on point with is, yeah. you know, he leads the team in reception. He's he's everything. Yeah, does he lead it in receptions now? In, in yardage? Okay, reception, okay. Yardage. I was gonna say yeah. He he's probably lead. on average, I would say too, right? Twenty plus yards per catch, which is is that what it is yeah, overall for the year. He's at like 20.3, okay. which is okay. like an elite I know it was number. over 20 last, last yeah, year. Yeah, that, that's an elite number. Um, no, I, I definitely understand the perspective you had. This is not a, like a pile on anybody's show. Like mm-hmm. I, clearly I had once I was wrong on two. He had to show it, and he has to continue to show it. But mm-hmm. he's been the, the most dependable receiver this yeah. year. On the and, and it hasn't really been close. No. Like I I don't know if we've seen a DK drop. The only, the only negative I could have on him so far this season was flat out the, the interception. He needs to be stronger on that. Yeah. And then he basically had the catch. He just, it, it should be a fumble more or less in my, in my opinion, the way, it, the way that played out because that's a ball he should have brought in. Um, but other than that, you know, some of the other guys have struggled with drops on, on pretty easy catches, you know, bells look really good, but he's had, he'd look a lot better with the extra yeah. 80 yards of receiving yards added on and two, t- two touchdowns and Pauling, you know, if he makes that grab, over the middle, he's got an extra thirty yards probably on his on his uh, stats right now because I there was at least fifteen there. Like yeah. I don't know if he would have been able to find some some room to room to rumble a little bit, but he definitely had his man beat on that slant run. Well, and if you talk to Chim, I guarantee you, Chim says, "Yeah, I should have I should have caught yeah. that." Oh yeah, you put that yeah. on himself, I'm sure. All right, we're going to come back with a couple more predictions, uh, give Justin a chance to talk about what he's got going on, and a question that I asked someone else that I'm going to throw Justin about the Big Ten West. That's coming up next on Lockdown Badgers, the exciting Big Ten West, and it's, it's – uh, <laughs> yeah. I don't know if I said it's exciting. It's battle to see who can be the most in that. Oh, we're going to win it, but it doesn't. It might not well, mean we're, a lot. We're not going to win it. We're going to win the West. We're, we're not going to win the, the most inept award. No, we're going to win the West. There's, there's a little school to our West that's that's really pushing themselves into the running for that one. It's brutal, man. Uh, today's episode is brought to you by the Jays case. Um, I left Rajiv up on this one last time I read him. Leave Justin on because he's, he's a family guy. I'm a family guy. 
The Jace case is all about preparing your family and being prepared in case of an emergency. Give you five life-saving antibiotics in a, in a Jace case. I have mine. We have ours in the medical cabinet. Listen, in case the apocalypse hits, the zombies come, or just a power outage, right? The Jace case is there for you to make sure you have antibiotics to take care of your family. If you can't get to the pharmacy, if the roads are blocked, whatever it is, don't get caught unprepared. Everybody should be empowered to care for themselves and their loved ones during the unexpected. The Jace case does that for you. And you can save money doing it. Save more than $360 by getting these life-saving antibiotics with Jace Medical plus an additional $20 off by using code Locked On at checkout on jacemedical.com. That's J-A-S-E medical.com, promo code Locked On. Empower yourself, protect your family. All right, Justin, uh, let's make some – actually, no, take um, – talk to me about Buck Report. When are you recording next? Uh, how can people find what you guys, you and Rajiv, have going on? Well, Rajiv and I will likely be recording on Wednesday night. So we'll, we'll hopefully have something out late Wednesday or early Thursday. We'll be posting. That's going to be our three big things for the bye week. And then the following Sunday, looking at you, sir, we are looking to do a long form. Yeah. A long form episode with Ryan to go over some more in-depth look at the first four games of the season. Has it been what we expected so far? You know, kind of take a more deep dive look into terms of what we've seen from the team so far this season and kind of what we are, hoping to see going forward on the year and and what we think we'll we will see the rest of the year yeah definitely go if you're not subscribed to them go subscribe what are you doing join that show as well uh we talk a lot about more good content is good right like more good voices are a good thing so definitely go check out what they're doing there on the bucky report find that on youtube podcasts wherever everywhere you find your normal podcast stuff um justin i want to throw this question to you because this came up the other day i talked about it i think i'd receive on and I don't know if I asked you about it, but even if I had, another week has gone by. Is the Big Ten West a joke? In normal seasons, no. In this season, I would say yes. I don't think we are – we're we're playing right now at about 75% of what I think our potential is. Everyone else seems like they're playing at like 25%. They all look terrible. And I say this is why when when people sit there and I, I look at some of the stuff that other fan bases are saying, and I'm like, have you guys not watched yourself play? Like, you're struggling to get over 20 points against non-conference teams. Like, this is like your non-con games, you should be putting up 30 plus. And we haven't looked super crisp. No. But I feel like we can put up 30 on every team in the West other than maybe Iowa. Like Iowa, we may struggle, but even them, I'm, they've taken a step back defensively from where they were last year. I think we can do some things to exploit them a little bit. It's just, it's not going to be a game where we roll up 40 points. Like we might, we might get to 24, but with their offense, that's more than enough. Like their offense is terrible. That's probably three times more than enough against Iowa. Uh, like their, their defense actually didn't look that bad against Penn State. Mm. Like uh, their offense was just so bad that their defense was on the field mm-hmm. for like 45 minutes. Yeah. It, the 97 plays Penn State ran. That's right. insane. That's like insane. 70 is a lot. 70 is what fast teams that are playing fast. Yeah. Have. If, if you're on the field for that long against a real good team, when Penn State's a real good team, like they have weapons, they've you know, like the, they're a really good team. If you're on the field for that long, you're going to crumble. I think their defense is still good. You're right. They didn't replace two first round talents that they lost with a comparable talent. That's still going to be a tough game, but their offense is so bad. Mm-hmm. If it's – like, let me ask you this. Does any team in the West – maybe I was still this answer. Does any team in the West really scare you? Like, Wisconsin going to lose to anybody. So, let's, let's be real here. But, like, so nobody scares me in the West. Here's how I look at it right now. I, I would say probably if the way we're looking at it, our offense might be the best actual individual, like, offense or defense in the actual – on our side. And I would say our special teams is probably the best special teams. Yeah. Um, but they have the best defense by far. They're just the most consistent with that. It's just I I don't think they can do anything if they get the ball back. And Wisconsin is competent enough offensively to piece together three drives in a game against them. Yeah. And if you keep if you keep getting three and outs against them, you're gonna eventually score. They don't have anything they can hang their hat on. Like there's no running game. It's it's mediocre, and they haven't really had a strong running game in what? God, it's got to be almost like ten years since we went since they had like a scary running game, maybe more. Yeah, it's been um, a while. They but they've at least had competent passers in the past, and I just think there's nothing there for them. They they did a 
they did a deep dive on one of the other podcasts that was out there where they talked about how many receptions the Iowa wide receivers had at 14. One of the service academy schools had 27. Awesome. That tells you all you need to know about how bad the oh. Iowa passing game has been. By the way, you wonder how, like, uh, Eric All, um, I forget the Ohio State receiver that transferred there. They must just be in, like, football hell, right? Like, <laughs> oh, yeah. you remember um, Little Giants? Yeah. The movie? And yeah. you had the the guy who carried, the like, the fridge on his back. I yeah. forget his name, but he, he was practicing with the Little mm-hmm. Giants, and he's like, yeah. I'm in football hell. Yeah, yeah. Those <laughs> Iowa skill players, man. They must be just like, what? planet is this i came from ohio state to this i came from mm-hmm. michigan to this mm-hmm. um give me a couple of predictions so we, we went through some of our good takes our bad takes um we both have several of each mm-hmm. give me some of your predictions for the rest of the year a couple that we can hang our hats on that you feel comfortable with um t- the off, the passing game will get it together I, I think that mordecai as he gets more comfortable as he sees more what these guys are going to do like I think a big part of what we're seeing here is there is a certain amount of creativity and flexibility that's allowed with the receiving in this offense. And I think as the season goes on, he's going to get more comfortable with what guys are going to do in certain circumstances. And he's going to let it rip a little bit more. Um, So I think the passing game will take a step forward. I think Braylon's going to have a big season. If he could stay healthy, he's going to have, he's probably going to get two or three more carries than what he was getting before. It's not going to be seven or eight. Um, and then I would say, I think the defense is at least going to be, I'll tell you what, I think we're going to be one of the better pass defenses by the end of the season. I think they're going to get it together. I like it. I, I think all those are good. Let me, I, your first one, I agree with completely. I wrote in mine, uh, we're going to see a couple Tanner Mordecai games. So mm-hmm. very similar. Like if you go back and look at game logs for Mordecai the last couple of years, there are a, and I know it's a different level, but he wasn't playing with the same type of talent either. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's a bunch of 350 yard games, four touchdown mm-hmm. games, 320 with four touchdowns. Like, I think we're going to see one or two of those down the stretch where mm-hmm. Mordecai is going to go for 330 with three touchdowns, four touchdowns, maybe even a 400 yard game, one of them. Like, so I agree with you on the passing side. I think it's going to come together. I think we're going to see a couple big Mordecai games. Another one I have is, and this is one of my negative ones. I had a two positives and one negative. I don't know if the offensive line ever really fully gels the way we want it to. I don't think it does. I, 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 I yeah. I think pass blocking, it's better than what I expected, but I don't know if we ever – I think Braylon's going to have a lot of yardage that is kind of meh yardage. Like, And what I say by that, it's, 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 it's not going to be high leverage situations where he's going to be putting up – making big, big runs. Um, I don't know if in an Ohio State game he's going to be going off for 100, 100, 150 yards in that game. I think he's going to struggle a little bit unless Mordecai is just – turns into a wizard and goes for 350 and four touchdowns. Yeah. And I, I wonder with Renfro, like a lot of hopes are pinned on this from myself as well. And that's, that's scary given his health. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, this is a guy who didn't practice in spring, didn't really practice in fall, hasn't played mm-hmm. yet. Like is the expectation really we're going to plug him in and it's going to be all good? I hope so. Uh, <laughs> it's I mean, probably I, not. I hope so too. Yeah. I hope so too. Uh, but and does that even solve what whatever issues Nelson is going through? Like, you know, so I, I just don't think that's ever going to be quite as good as – it should be better. Mm-hmm. It, I don't know if it's ever going to be quite as good as we hope. And then my last one is – this is kind of a combination one with the secondary. I think, to your point, it's going to solidify. I think we're going to see Zachman kind of solidify himself into a role, not just for the rest of this year, but next year as well. And then I think one of my predictions is we might see one of the young corners start to play a little bit more. You said mm-hmm. Austin Brown. I'm going to say Declona. I think Declona for sure. I think he's going to start playing a little bit more. Maybe I don't want to say in place of Alexander Smith or just, but I think we're going to see him get more reps. Mm-hmm. I agree with that. I, I think he's got an opportunity to springboard himself in the next season where he could end up being one of our better corners. Yep. No, I agree. Um, that's it. That's the show. Uh, really good show as always. Really do appreciate Justin coming in. Good takes, bad takes. Listen, we keep receipts here. And if we mm-hmm. didn't, someone else would. So we might as well put it out there first. Um, on Wisconsin, we're going to talk a bunch more this week. Got uh, a couple interviews coming up this week that you're going to be excited for as well. Go follow the Bucky Report, Justin and Rajiv doing their show uh, on Wisconsin. Justin, thanks for jumping in. Yeah, no problem, man.